Hey there, Bridge family, it's Pastor Jeff, and I'd like to ask you a question that's going to link two scriptures together in a way that I pray will help to inform you on instruction. I'm hoping today to inform you on instruction. Here are the two verses. I'd ask you to take them down and go look at these verses in a prayerful way and ask yourself, what do Isaiah chapter 40 verse 2 and John chapter 1 verse 38 have in common? How are they related? You see, it's in Isaiah 40 verse 2 where we are taught how to comfort one another. How to comfort. It's in Isaiah 40 verse 1 where we are commanded to comfort. Comfort my people, says your God. And then in verse 2, we're taught how to comfort. Now with that said, what is it that John 1.38 brings to this thought process and this understanding? It's Jesus in John 1.38 who turns and says to his first would-be followers, What do you want? What do you want? Friends, I want to talk to you for just a minute about instruction, about instruction or teaching. And here's the point. Your motivation, your motivation is going to have everything to do with God's teaching in your life. Those that you meet, their motivation is going to have everything to do with how you may or may not be able to disciple them. You see, friends, our motivation, what we really want, what we seek, what we're looking for in the macro sense of our lives and in the micro sense of an individual time of teaching, our want to is going to determine in large part what we take away from any teaching, whether it be from the Bible, God's Word, or some schoolroom activity or environment. You know as well as I do that what you want determines how you come to it. When we look at the motivation of the heart, when we realize that Jesus was always looking at and evaluating the motivations of the heart, it's going to change the way we look at instruction, at teaching. I would say this to you, and I believe this is exactly what we find in God's Word, that until the motivation is right, we're likely going to ignore the message, we're not going to engage in the mission, and we're certainly not going to uphold the methods of our God. Conversely, when the motivation of the heart has been changed by God, the message, when you hear the teaching and the preaching of God's word, when you open up the Bible for yourself, when you hear the message from God, now you are literally listening to the Lord himself, and you know it, and you want it. Your motivation for the message changes as God changes your heart. Similarly, when it comes to the mission of God, when your motivation is to bring glory to God, then you embrace his mission with all you have until you are devoted, dedicated to bringing glory to God. The idea and your relationship to the mission of God is very lackluster lukewarm, if I can quote the Bible. You see, your motivation is going to dictate your relationship to the mission. And lastly, in a very similar way, the way that you look at the Word of God, the desire that you have for the will of God, will directly impact the extent to which you either embrace or ignore the ways of God, the methodology. Your motivation your coming to the attitude of the heart when you come to instruction, when you come to a time of teaching from God in his word, your motivation will determine your devotion to the message, your devotion to the mission, and your devotion to the methods of our God. Oh, listen, just do it however you want. All we got to do is get this job done, says the one whose motivation is religious. But when the motivation is relationally devoted to bringing glory to God, when we talk about the methods, we're just as concerned, just as dedicated to God's methods as we are his mission and his message. 
I pray, friends, that you'll look at Isaiah 40, verse 2, and John chapter 1, verse 38, and you'll see the relationship that when God is going to teach us, going to instruct us on how he wants us to come with the right heart, the proper motivation, so that we won't just do it, we'll have a get-to, God-glorifying attitude in all that we do. Amen and amen.